And on that line, accountability. Yes. So under the first point of know them by their fruits, you don't have an apple tree without knowing that there is a grounding, a root system. Okay, what is that ministry rooted in as far as their belief system, their doctrine, who, who they're connected with, man? And then accountability. Now, why is that important? You got to go back to Jesus's ministry in John chapter two. Here it is, his first miracle that he performs. And you talk about accountability. He turns water into wine. They didn't even need any more wine, but he did it. And then he tells them to do this. He said, now go give it to the governor of this feast. Now, how does that relate to today? The governor is the one in authority, the one in charge and the place where you're feeding. And that's why I always preach the importance of a local church or a good pastor, finding someone that can ground you. I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I, I thank God for the pastor that called me out that I was under for many years that said, Hank, you have uh, a scary accuracy about you. Now, I'm, I was like 24, 25, 26. He said, you have a scary accuracy about you. And he said, but I'm going to tell you something. You're called to prophesy uh, to kings, and, and God's going to have you prophesy to presidents. And, and I have. I've done it, and I don't always talk about it. But he said, you're not going to get anywhere unless you stop walking like a chicken when you prophesy. <laughs> and I didn't realize I was doing it. He goes, he goes stop your antics. And I, and I told him, you know what my answer was? If you want to be a mature prophet, you're going to be correctable in your process and your training. I was offended. I said, I don't walk like a chicken. He said, yes, you do. Now you look yourself online. There's things I still don't like. And nobody <laughs> likes to watch themselves. It's hard. Listen. But he said, you walk like a chicken. I said, well, I can't help it. He said, yes, you can. I said, no, the spirit of God comes on me too strong. He goes, yes, it does come on you strong because it comes out in the authority of when you speak. But he said, the spirit, the Bible says, is subject to the what? Prophet. Prophet. So don't tell me that you can't control it. It, it, listen, if you go in, and, I, and I'm telling you, you usually have a few minutes when you go in and you meet with the dignitary. And if you're jerking and gyrating, <laughs> and, and they're, they're going to throw you out in a minute. They're going to think you have a seat. You've already wasted 30 You've seconds. Already, they're they're going to not take you legitimate. But when you walk in as a statesman, you walk Very in good. there and you carry it. You let it be about your words of authority. I, I ministered to one guy one time. He cleared the room, and I'm prophesying with a Secret Service guy. And he said, this president, and he said, and I prophesied to him, told him six things that were on his desk. And he said, I have sought psychics, I've sought witches, I've sought the priests. But he said, nobody, when they speak, makes my bones rattle, like when I hear you speak. And he listened to me, okay? If I would have went in there, you know, walking and dancing like a chicken and gyrating and moving around and, and talking a mile a minute, he wouldn't have received. So keep that in mind. It's very important. What are you grounded? Second, there is the process. If, if there's the process from the time that that apple tree takes root, there's a process that it has to grow. Okay. What is the history? What's the consistency of the vessel that's speaking to you, prophesying to you? That's very okay, have good. they had a consistent marriage? Now, some things you can't help. Some, some marriages has not been the fault of the vessel. Some, you look at their children, some of it hasn't been the fault of the parents. The children chooses to go the way of rebellion. But for the most part, what is the process? What is their character, their integrity? How do they handle money? Do they, do they manipulate you through their money? That's one of the worst, that's one of the first indicators of a false prophet is the manipulation of money, the salesman spirit, okay, manipulating you. What's their integrity like? How do they treat people that are around them? Is there any longevity of anyone that stuck it out in their ministry? Okay. Are they a womanizer? Mm -hmm. Right? Do you know? Right? Or are they a dudeizer or the opposite? Um, you know? I don't know what that is. You don't know what that is. It could be liking another dude if they're a dude, but here's the point. <laughs> The, the, the point and is, that's unfortunately you, you, you've got to look at the process, and that process has to do with maturity, longevity, yes. you know. Is, is, there a, is there something that I can look at? I'm rather, okay, I'm looking at this fruit, this apple, but I, I got to understand, you know, if you would 
chop down the apple tree and you would look at the, the trunk, you would see, right, how old the tree was. Mm -hmm. You would see the process, right? Yes, true. Very right? important. You would also see some years that, boy, the heat was on. Yeah. And That's you would see really the years good. of blessed rain and, and it would, you would see consistency. It kept standing. All right. Now let's talk about the last one, the fruit. The fruit, when it comes to the fruit, is I always say it, it about this. You know, when it comes to the fruit is what have they really matured into? That is something that you can bite on, trust in, that it is sincerely coming from God. If the other two parts, the grounding, the process is jacked up, then you probably shouldn't take a whole lot of weight in the fruit. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's go on. Very good. Here's another problem that we run into in Acts 17, verse 22. When it comes to prophecy, remember our first point is regularly review what God has already said through trusted so voices. So once the voices are trusted, then what, 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 what are we reviewing? And, it, and let me tell you, there's three sources of information. The throne room, which is the highest level. That's thus saith the Lord. Second is the second heaven, which is the prince of the power of the air. It's the occult realm. It's where the psychics operate. And here's what happens. They have certain prophecies, the satanic kingdom, that they want repeated in the earth. So what they do Very is they true. look for people who will say what they want them to say, whether it be immature people, people that are fear mongers, because that's the spirit of fear, right? Does it make you afraid? You know, I, I listen to some people that are like, oh, this prophet online saying this. I said, yeah, but do you feel the spirit of fear on it when it comes? It's not a holy fear. The Bible says that Noah, being warned of God in a dream, was told to store up. Okay, he, there, was, there was a warning. There was preparation. He was moved with a holy fear and reverence. It wasn't a fear like you got to panic, go buy a cell phone, go run out and find a cave, store up beans and rice, right? <laughs> and all the things that happens with fear mongering. And so I tell people all the time, be careful of that stuff. Right. Very important. You know, okay. What's my point? So, well, let's, let's, <laughs> it, all, it, well, it, it's truly all good. But the point is we're going to go to Acts 17, 22. So this, this is, was a big one. I feel yeah. like back in 2020, it's like if people get, we call them, Pastor has called them this, prophetic junkies. It's like they're always looking for the next prophecy. Yeah. And prophets do prophesy a lot. I mean, that's one of their marks, one of their giftings. They're apt to prophesy. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But it becomes a problem when we become, you know, we, we go from website to website. Facebook to Facebook, YouTube channel to YouTube channel. Um, and we're just looking for something that, quote, we want to hear. So rather than hear the words that we've heard and war with them, we'll talk about that, First Timothy 1.18, um, war with those prophecies. Um, rather than war with it, people are like these people in Athens who always, they lived their life looking to see and hear some new things. So and they put the scripture up yeah, as well so for the people to see. In fact, we see. should read that. We should read it. Um, Acts 17 and 22. I want to just make sure, yeah, it's the one after it. So he said, Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, you men of Athens, I perceive in all things you're too superstitious. Verse, and a lot of people get over into that with a prophetic, you're don't You're always they? wanting to hear or see some new things. And then the next verse says, go to the next one. For, um, I go to the one before. I wanted to see verse 21. If you go back to that, for the, all the Athenians, and this is the, what we wanted to see, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Now, this is a group of people in the scripture, and we saw this so much with the prophetic. I think it's, it's one of the downsides of the prophetic in the body of Christ. And Paul corrected that. You can't live always looking for a new word. You know, I, I hear a lot of prophecies that come forth in this church, and some of them have some repeat information to it because God isn't always saying something new. He's repeating. Obviously, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is repetitive to the fact that God wants to get a point across. And so 
I think this is a, a big deal as we go into this next election cycle is all of us need to uh, have a measure of discipline about us that we're not just out there you know, clicking through, trying to find some word that we want to hear. And that's a bad yeah. thing because, you know, the Bible also teaches that in the last days, people will heap to themselves with itching ears, whatever it is they want to hear. And so we have to be very careful of that. So I think in the prophetic, it's important that we're not just hunting for the new, but we're rehearsing, okay? The Bible says, put up First Timothy 1 and 18, it says this charge, yeah. Uh, commit I, Timothy, I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before thee, or that you've already heard. Okay, think about the ones we've already heard um, that went on before you, that by them you might war a good warfare. I think it would be good as we're going into this election cycle that we take prophecies, all of us, that we've heard. You know, I think about some um, personal prophecies Pastor Hank and I had received early on in our days starting in the ministry. Um, we would get called out at meetings, and this was back in the day when somebody called you out and gave you a, a, a prophetic word, they'd hand you a little cassette tape. I know some of you don't even know what those are, but they'd give you this little cassette. This was before CDs were a thing, uh, before you could go back and watch the archive. And we had this little box, and we collected all of these little tapes with these prophetic words and we would play them and rehearse them and say you know what god we come in agreement with that we wrote some of them down and and took them and went over them and this is what paul is teaching timothy i think what some of us need to do and what will keep us from getting in fear when we see the liberal left do crazy things, because there's been prophetic words about that. They'll try stuff, right? Evil doers are gonna be evil doers. They'll try things, and we're gonna talk about the warfare. Mm -hmm. But I think if we would take the prophecies that we've heard about what God wants to do in America, imagine, and we rehearse them, and we hold them up, and we stay in faith with those, and we attach scripture to that. Imagine the faith of God's people being brought up, rather than just get in fear when you hear a bad headline. No, we're going to hold that's on why. to those words. Well, and that's why, Very yes, important. that's a good hand clap right there. That's why I, I, I now I remember my train of thought. So there's three levels of, of, of information. Number one, the throne room, thus saith the Lord. Yes. And that's based upon something that is a principle that you have to understand when it comes to the throne room prophecy. Uh, I wrote a whole book on it, is when God was dealing with three prophetic voices, Moses, his brother, Aaron, and his sister, mm. Miriam. Three prophetic voices. And Miriam, the sister, and Aaron, the brother, started speaking against Moses. And God came down and he said to Miriam and Aaron, he said, if there be a prophet among you, right then and there, because they got into criticism, this is what you have to be careful when it comes to the prophetic, don't get over in criticism because God may discount something in your life. He won't honor it. He won't bless it. Because Exodus 7, verse 1 says that Aaron was a prophet. Exodus 15 says that Miriam was a prophetess. So God was not even recognizing the office that he gave him because they were being dishonorable in it. He said, if there be a prophet among you, I will speak to them, right, in visions and dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. Now God's telling you a higher level. I speak to him face to face. And then he said this, my servant Moses is humble. So he was saying the other ones weren't humble. So humility goes a long way, but also intimacy. True throne room prophets, prophetess, carry the friendship of God. It is so extremely important. I, I'll go through these quicker. Second is the, the second heaven, which is that, that warfare realm. The third level of information is the media, the earth realm. Yes. And, and I'm watching something that is an absolute grievance to the Lord. And that is when the 2020 election happened, people believe the lying fake news more so than they did the word of the Lord from the prophets, from intercessors, from Christians that heard that this man, 45, would win. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we need, if so, I could tag onto that, 
we need to get that better this go We got to get it better. I, I feel like this go around internet because how I many know there's more to the story that we're all realized yeah than than what people jumped uh, two conclusions. Well, and God on. told you yeah. back well, we'll talk to about that. stick with that story. With that you story. said, you know, people said, well, you should change now, you know, January no. 6th to 20th. It's all changed. And you said, no, God said, well, stay the, story with the story came from 9 11 when God first yeah. said, it. Yeah. I will raise up from New York a president who will turn this nation and bring it back on its right course. Then he kept prophesying it. Then he told us when it was going to happen 12 years in advance and kept repeating it. The 240th year of America's reign. Well, it happened. This New York president came in 2016, and so God's been saying it. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed what he said. He said, "Stay with the story." So I'm saying with the story, and that's why. Look at what God said. All these indictments are going to keep falling like feathers. Um, we're watching that happen one by one. All right, let's go back to First Timothy 1:18. Then I want to move on to the next point because we're talking about regularly reviewing what God has already said through trusted voices. First Timothy 1.18, there's a principle here. When it comes to prophecy, you gotta wage a good warfare. What do you do? You do exactly what we're saying. You review what God has said, and you put it before Him. You pray those prophecies out. The problem in 2020, and I hated it, is when people would ask me, so is 45 gonna win? Is, and, I, and they would put you on the spot, and they made it, and, and, I, and I began to say to people, and I remember talking to Dutch Sheets. I said, Dutch, we've got to be careful of something. People think that something is automatic, yet I have a prophecy from August 16th of 2020 that you all saw and has been on Flashpoint. I've shared it many times where God said, August 16th of 2020, the election would be stolen, delayed through a planned, chaotic thing. And it didn't make any sense to me. How can God say that this 45 is going to win and the election is going to be stolen? And guess what I did? I became just like many. I got in my head and I couldn't figure it out. Makes no sense, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to wage a good warfare. You've got to hold on to the word of the Lord. One of the greatest things that marked a prophet in the Bible was could they hold on to the word of the Lord or would they just blab it? They had to learn the art of being quiet and trusting what they heard and trust what they spoke. That's why God said to uh, Jeremiah, do not be moved by their faces. Don't be moved by the people. You have to stay with what heaven has said. Very good. Okay, that's very important. So you can't do that if you're not waging war warfare or if you're always trying to hear some new thing. Let's go to the next thing on this one. Second thing is, look at verse 19. Wage a good warfare, hold faith. You gotta have faith in what God has said. Yes. Don't listen to the contrary voices and a good conscience. You know how important your soul is? That's talking about your mind, will, and your emotions. You know what happens when people hear prophecy? They got into anxiety. People wrote, I am so afraid. I trusted prophetic voices. And look at what happened to our nation. And they began to blame. And Which we're going to talk, about, we're gonna talk that. about that. So you got to watch your soul. If it looks like something doesn't, I mean, we should have learned from the uh, the election with Gore and Bush. And I had prophesied ahead of time, documented again. I sent the prophecies to trusted prophetic voices. Do you know that some didn't receive it? Names that were recognized in the body didn't receive it. I said, this election with Bush and Gore is not going to be settled on election night. How many of you in this church, you remember this? Yes. And God gave me a dream. And I said, and God gave me a dream about it. It will not be settled. I saw a hand being raised up out of the ground of something the devil was trying to raise up his candidate in, in El Gore. And I saw, and whether we believe Bush is this or that, here's the bottom line. I saw the hand go around this that was being raised up out of the ground three times. And I said, there was something about three times. I mean, no, there's three recounts all before it happened. But I said, it ultimately went to the Supreme Court and this Bush guy won the election by a five to four Supreme Court decision. This is how it's going to play out. The night of that election, they, they called it for gore. I went, I laid in my bed, and Brenda can tell you, I pulled the covers over my head and said, what did I do to you, God? What did I do to you, God? I felt so bad, not, not for, I mean, I love you, but I felt bad. I said, God, I've failed you, man. I will get this right. Well, I didn't let it play out. I didn't watch over my soul. Same thing happened in 2020. People got into fear got into anger, got into finger pointing. I'm cutting off the prophets. I'm cutting <laughs> off the church. I'm not. 
Are you listening? It's against what Good. the scripture tells us. The last thing is avoid shipwreck. Too yeah. many people shipwrecked in their, in their faith. All right, let's go to the second one for the sake of time. Yes.